In this video, I'm going to show how to create an inset map on your QGIS map layout uh, with the inset having a different scale and different symbols from the main map. Uh, you'll also see that I've got an extent indicator here showing the location of the inset map and I have scale bars on both the inset map and the main map. I'll be using some data from Yakima, Washington for this demo that I downloaded from OpenStreetMap. Thank you, OpenStreetMap contributors. And this is just saved locally on my machine. I think it was in a shapefile that I saved uh, in a set of shapefiles. Um, and I originally set this up in here inside of the QGIS map view. I added a bunch of layers in here. Uh, I've got railroads, waterways, parks, uh, buildings, and things like that. Not all of them are visible at this initial scale. I have set some uh, scale ranges at which layers appear and disappear, and this allows me to control how much information is shown at one time uh, on this map. I never want the user to get too overwhelmed and uh, have the map really cluttered, and so I have strategically turned on and off layers and labels as the user reaches different scales. Uh, one thing that I did in order to facilitate that is to make a duplicate or a copy of this highways uh, layer in my table of contents. One of them is for use when I'm zoomed in, the other when I'm zoomed out. I right clicked here and you can see how I could duplicate this layer if I wanted so, so that I could tweak the symbology on one of them uh, if I were to zoom in or out. Uh, the way that I set up the scale range is I go to the properties of the layer and uh, then I will look down here at the rendering properties and you'll see that uh, when the highways are uh, zoomed in uh, they appear at 1 to 50,000 uh, all the way down to as close as I can get to the map and then the zoomed out version of the highways appears uh, when I go out beyond 1 to 50,000. You can see that here and then I've just put some ridiculously big scale factor here so that this layer continues to be visible as I zoom out. Uh, you can also set up these uh, scale dependencies on the labels and you, you should do that as well. If you go to the labels and the rendering, um, you will see that I have these uh, some of these labels appearing actually sooner at 1 to 200,000 and then changing at uh, 1 to 50,000. I guess this is to um, prevent some of the labels from continuing to be seen if I were to zoom way out because it it wouldn't look that great uh, if I was zoomed out beyond 1 to 200,000. And then when I get from to 1 to 50,000, I want to change. That's when uh, this zoomed in highways layer will kick in. And uh, just like I have set up uh, the rendering properties of this one to show up at 1 to 50,000, I've also gone into the labels, rendering, and placed that here. So as you play around with these, you can get the layers to turn on and off as you go in and out, as well as the labels and uh, this allows you to see more detail as you go in. So here I'm beyond 1 to 50,000. You can see now I have a bunch of uh, labels and uh, new streets showing up and uh, this layer is now visible in the table of contents. And I've even got other things that start to show up like parks and if I were to go way in I'd start to see the building footprints showing up. I haven't turned in these on down here uh, until I get down here because uh, they take a while to draw inside of QGIS. So uh, with this setup I can then begin to think about making a layout. So let's go here and uh, make one. I'll just keep this default landscape view. That works pretty well for what I'm doing. Uh, first I'm going to throw the main map uh, down onto the page here. Uh, so I'm adding the map. You can see I use this button, add map. And um, I'm going to adjust the position a bit. I'm going to zoom and pan this, so I have to use this button right here, move item content. Now I can um, pan this a little bit. Well, I'm going to center the city here. That shows most of what I want to show uh, in this view here. And uh, then I want to put my inset map down here in the lower left. So I would add another map onto the page drag and drop it like this, maybe adjust the size, that's going to obscure too much of the main part of the town. So I'll adjust. And now I'm going to go ahead and move uh, the content here so I can zoom this one in 
uh, to the downtown area that I want to focus on. And you can see that special uh, symbology f uh, for the uh, zoomed in highways and roads that is starting to show up as I zoom into downtown. So I've, although I have two different map frames, they're, uh, they're showing different scales and, and that's affecting the features that get shown there. Uh, now, one uh, feature that I wanted to demonstrate to you uh, was how I could uh, put a little uh, extent rectangle here showing uh, the place that the inset map covers. Um, so to do this, I'm going to select the main one. Oh, you know what? First of all, this is uh, kind of problematic here. I need to put a frame around. The way you could do that is just show the properties of this frame, which I've got down here in the lower right. And uh, let's just check this box here. Turn on the frame. Great. Okay. Now for the box here in the middle, uh, I'm going to select this map frame from the back main map. And as I scroll down, you can see this item for overviews. Uh, we'll just add one. And uh, we need to choose map two overview. And you'll see that it appeared in red here. Uh, so I could leave it like this, partially transparent, or I could turn it into a square. Um, let's do that. So if I change this fill symbol, um, I'll change the fill to be no brush and I want to change the stroke style uh, to be a solid line. So when I do that, you can see that this, this frame, and maybe what I would do is uh, throw in a little bit of text here that says something like C inset map, just to guide the map reader. Uh, and then uh, to further guide the reader, I could put some titles on here, maybe a large piece of text indicating that this is the, the main map here. Let's put a big font. Um, maybe make it nice and bold. And then uh, we could also put a title here onto our inset map. Maybe we could make this one a little bit smaller, also bold, but not quite as big. Great. Now, um, let's say that we want to put some scale bars on these. With scale bars, we have to be careful that we uh, put them in the correct, or that we put them in the correct frame. So we wouldn't want to take a scale bar that we made for our inset and have it being winding up over here in the main map because it would be inaccurate. Uh, so the key here is uh, I'm going to select first, let's put a scale bar on the, the main map. And I can choose to add one over here and uh, drag and drop it. This one will be automatically associated with the, the, the frame that I had selected. And we can verify that. This is indeed two kilometers wide uh, on the ground. I'm pretty familiar with this geography, so uh, I know that's correct. It's in the United States. Let's change it to miles. And uh, maybe we'll just uh, set the, the width uh, at one unit. Maybe we want it to be one mile across. Uh, this black really kind of takes over the visual hierarchy of our map. Maybe we can change the display to lighten this up a little bit. Maybe just a gray will be a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so we've got a one mile scale bar here. Now for the downtown, um, I'm going to highlight and select this frame and we'll just put another one in here. And the first thing I want to do is a little bit of a, a sanity check to make sure this is accurate. And indeed, it's, it's actually trying to report this in meters. So it detected that that this scale bar was going to go into this frame. What you don't want to do is have this be dragged over here or it, it, it won't work. So you got to be careful to keep those matched up. Uh, let's keep this on miles and maybe we could change it to, um, if I go down here actually, uh, maybe we could show divisions every 0.5 miles and just have one of them. If I put that over there, or actually that's kind of wide, so maybe we want to do something like a quarter of a mile. It's a little more manageable. And then we could uh, set it there and change the color like we did with the other one. So remember we went to display. And then you can start adjusting the fill symbol and playing around with that. 
try and match uh, more or less the color I used before. Okay, so now we have a main map, uh, an inset map that's at a different scale. It's showing more features. Uh, we've got a little extent rectangle here with a, a guide to the user that they can go uh, look at the inset map. And we have two scale bars here that are each associated with the appropriate uh, map. 